Hey, how's it going? And today we're just taking a quick look at how to access items or elements within an array in verse. So what would we use this for? Well, one thing we could use this for is let's say we are going to make a multiple choice test and the answers to those tests are actually, there's six possible answers and they're stored as integers, the buttons, the answers correspond to the integers zero through five. So zero is like answer number one, one is answer number two, so on and so forth. So let me show you what the code looks like here. So this is straight from another tutorial I did on the trigger counter, which is incredibly useful. But I'm just going to go over the lines of code that deal with creating an array. As far as that goes, it's this line here on line 18. So here we have created an array called test answers. Whenever you put the brackets, that means it's going to create an array. And then here we would put in let's say we had four questions on our test, we would put in the answers, the correct answers. So let's say the answers two, five, three, and one, those are the correct answers on our test for four separate questions, right? So then down here, we already have on here a trigger count that's initialized. And then down here, what's happening is initially comes in as zero, but every time the trigger gets triggered, it goes up by one. So it starts out zero and then goes one, two, three, because it's being incremented every time the triggers. So that also would allow us then to cycle through our the elements in our array and go, we want item zero, we want item one, we want item two, we want item three element. So that would allow us to cycle through our correct answers. So then all we'd have to do once we have that set up is just say, does you know the button you pressed equal this answer? And if it does, then we would increment another counter giving you a correct score for that. So that would be the next tutorial I might do on how we would do that. But that's just like I said before, that's just kind of like basic programming. Really, we only have three lines of code in here to initialize the array. So this is the first one here where we initialize an array with the values and we would hard code in what the answers are. Like if we knew we had, let's say we had one more question, let's say it was a five question test, we'd have put in the answers, you know, for those five tests. So then down here, we would say on triggered, all this is the trigger counts going to do its thing. But then we'd say, if the test answers, that's our array, and here's the trigger count, which is our, our numbers that are being incremented under trigger count, initially initialized to one, zero, I mean, and then, and then going up every time it gets triggered by one, pull that element out and assign it basically to the variable of answer. So then we're creating a variable here, answer, that is capturing the elements in our array and trigger count is cycling through every time it gets triggered. And then the last, the last line of code is really print. The answer is this variable answer. And then that would print out whatever the element is in our array. So what we expect to see is as we trigger each time we step on the trigger, we'd expect to see two, five, three, one, and zero. So if I, if this all works, we'll see that those elements print out one at a time as this trigger count variable gets incremented. And then it pulls the items from this test answers array, assigns it to this variable answers, and then we print it out, whatever that element is, the value of that element is. I don't know, we could put a number in here, like if any numbers we wanted in here, but let's say I put 55, it doesn't really matter. We can put ever, whatever integers we want into this array. But I'm just putting these low numbers because those correspond to the pop-up device. And that only has six possible values. So that's why those numbers are so low. But I'm going to go ahead and go back into Unreal Editor for here. And then we're going to simply go build verse code. And we don't get any errors. And I'm just going to push those changes that I made. And then I'll be back as soon as the session updates. Okay, so I'm back and we're ready to get started. And like I said, if I did this right, when I go across that trigger up in the upper left hand corner, we should see the number two. And remember that corresponds to our code here, right? How we initialized our array with these values, two, five, three, one, and zero. So those are the numbers we should see. And let's see if that's what we see. So here I go on the trigger, look in the upper left corner. The answer is two, that's correct. The next one should be five, the answer is five. See that, the answer is five. The answer is three, that's right. The answer is one, that's right. 
The answer is zero. That's right. So that's how you would access elements with an array. I hope you found this helpful. And again, I hope you're not adverse to verse. We're just doing little baby steps here and there on things that I think are important. But in this one, actually, I'm working on a little side project to see if I can create the number of correct answers for a multiple choice test.